Welcome back to West Pregame. I'm Kate Gibble, and I'm joined right now with Brian Catton. Brian, as our f fall semester is coming to a close, uh, men and women's indoor track is seeing the fresh, uh, seeing a fresh start this weekend as they start their season. Can you give us a preview of what to expect this Saturday? Well, what I think we'll be seeing is basically a shell of the team competing. Uh, there will just be five other teams, is my understanding, so it'll be a fairly fast meet. Uh, the cross-country members who are just coming from their outdoor season will probably not be seeing much action. Normally, Coach Craig may not even run a distant event at this particular uh, meet. And here we go. Um, so it'll, it'll be mostly sprinters, uh, hurdlers, and throwers competing for us. Perhaps a couple of Paul Volders, uh, one on each side, men's and women's, who are supposed to be pretty good this year, possibly challenging for a, a school record as the season wears on. Coach Curry, very happy about that. It could be some points when bigger meets come along. This is a non-scored meet, so it's just kind of a proving ground, a starting ground for the team to, to get its feet wet, so to speak. Uh, I don't believe Ladarius Shrew, who is our uh, all NASCAC uh, champion and uh, outstanding sprinter for the men's team who's coming off the football season, will probably be inactive. Also, he was injured during football and kind of pieced his way through. Uh, but it's just a good opportunity to, to get the team on the track and, and get them a little bit of exposure to competing against other schools. It'll, it'll be good. And Brian, you mentioned our cross-country team. I know we had an All-American this year. Are you looking to see anything like that for the indoor track and field teams? Well, this will be an opportunity, I think, for Ladarius Shrew to stand out when the sprint season really gets underway and we start with the regional competition. He is probably our prime candidate to draw some kind of regional and national recognition. We did lose Tommy Lark, who was just outstanding as a long and triple jumper throughout his career. Uh, did have a year off in between his uh, junior, I mean, uh, sophomore and junior years, but came back strong his last two seasons as well. Three-time All-American indoors and outdoors. I don't know if we have somebody quite that capable on the national level yet, but I mean, we'll, we'll see. It's it's an opportunity for the kids to show what they can do. Definitely our distance crew and Brian Marsh, who's coming off the All-American performance in cross country, can certainly excel in the 5,000 indoors maybe a 3,000 as well. So we'll see where they are come you know, late January, early February when the season really kicks into high gear. Well, thanks for that preview, Brian. And not far from where we are right now, the Silway Gymnasium, uh, the Wesley Natatorium is gonna see some action this Saturday. Can you tell us anything about the swimming and diving teams who'll be taking on Brandeis University? Well, this is a good meet for the team to get a little bit of confidence. Brandeis is coming in 0-4 on the season, both men and women. Uh, they're not a very deep squad. They have nine men, 11 women, as compared to our 20 or 25 swimmers. Uh, so our depth will definitely prove out to be an advantage as far as scoring is concerned. I think we'll also take first place in most events as well. So this is a confidence builder for the team. As they, this is their last meet before January. And it's just nice to go in thinking that you're competing to the best of your level at this point. Swimming is one of those sports where you can cut seconds off your time as the season wears on and as the team tapers down for the regional competition toward NESCAX and then hopefully on to something at nationals, which we haven't had a lot of national competitors of late. Hopefully uh, Coach, Coach Solomon is looking to try and get some of his better swimmers to that level before the end of the season. We do have some very capable swimmers. Uh, Kara coker Eibel, uh, Rachel Hirsch, and Angela Slevin on the women's side are all very capable in their particular venues. Uh, Brendan Fortin is an outstanding IM and uh, does a lot of other strokes well. And I think we saw in the Amherst meet that uh, Jock Vazil is going to be a force in the sprint side of the breaststroke. So he's already swimming under a minute for 100 breast, which is very quick at this point in the season. Uh, he's a powerful young man, and I think we'll be seeing things going for him toward the NESCAC season. You mentioned, Brian, that we've had a bit of a rocky season. Can you talk about some of our biggest NESCAC contenders and what we're looking for for the rest of the season? Well, I don't think I said we had a rocky season exactly, but I know swimming and, and track as well, they're interesting sports because while you do get a team score at times, it's really an individual activity. I think our swimmers know what they're capable of doing, and I think it's up to Coach Solomon to get them working toward improvement as the season wears on. Right now, you know, if you look at times right now, you will not see times that will be qualifying for NCAAs uh, uh, on the Wesleyan team. That doesn't mean we're not gonna see them later on. 
I, I'm hopeful that they will prove a little bit stronger as the NESCAC season comes into its full swing. We did, the women did beat Bates, which was a good win for them, although you know, Bates dominated the freestyle, we dominated the breaststroke, the backstroke, and the IM as well as the butterfly. So whether we can get the freestylers up to the same speed as the season wears on, we'll have to see on the women's side. The men just, they don't have those real outstanding national contenders. So when we go up against the stronger teams, the Williams, the Tufts, the Amherst, we're not going to see great results, but it's an individual thing. So each individual swimmer can take from, its, from the competition what he or she is hoping for. I mean, I see the kids coming out of the water and they're getting high fives from their teammates because they achieved what they were looking to get, what their time might be as opposed to what it could have been. And they did better than expected or the relay had a really good performance. That's the sort of thing that swimming comes to, to give as the season goes on. When it comes to NESCAX, I think both teams would love to finish top half. I think the women have a chance of doing that. The men may not be quite at that level yet, but we'll see how it goes. And as we're gearing up for the, game, the basketball game tonight, we should not forget that uh, on Friday and Saturday here in Silway Gymnasium, the women will, women's basketball team is having a tournament. Yes. Um, what are you looking for to see? My first opportunity to see the women play. They've been on the road for three games, did a great job up at St. Joe's winning the tournament and their tip off up there, including a, an overtime victory against the host, uh, a team we've beaten more often than not. I think we're 11 and one against them all time, but some scores have been close. Some scores have been lopsided wins for Wesleyan, but I think St. Joe's went in with confidence, winning its game in the opening round by 40. Wesleyan also winning substantially against SUNY Purchase. We found uh, a score in, in Dries and Heath, which is amazing to me that a player who scored, I think, 22 points all last year in 14 games can in one game score 25 points and basically outscore her entire season. But this is what we were looking for from that sophomore class, someone to step up and become a scorer, because the team did lose three outstanding seniors who were both scorers, rebounders, assist makers. They were basically the hub of the squad with a, a good bit of assistance from Amber Wessels and right now the injured Jenna Clace at the guard positions when the other three were forwards. I think this was an opportunity for those kids to fill voids and prove themselves. And I think we're finding Jess Terenza is coming through. She's a good, solid front, front court player. Uh, if we can get um, some more production out of the newcomers to fill some voids, that would be great. If Kendra Harris can do what she did, she had 12 rebounds in that championship. Actually, I think it might have been against Vassar. Either the championship game or Vassar, she had 12 rebounds. That's the kind of performance we need. She is a figure underneath, and when she spreads her wings and wants the ball, she can really help the team in that regard. She's never been a big scorer, but she can be a, a force underneath the basket. Um, so this is a, a good opportunity for the team to find out where it's at. I don't, we don't know a lot about Johnson & Wales. I don't believe we've ever played them. So yeah, I'm expecting the team to have a good performance in both games. Uh, even the other two teams coming in, St. Joe's of Long Island and Mitchell. Mitchell's been playing reasonably well on the women's side. Their men have actually been playing pretty well, too, and our men's team is possibly going to see them up at Norwich in an upcoming tournament this weekend. So not sure what to expect at, at the second game. Not much I, to know about the first game. I think Coach Mullen will just want the team to execute the game plan and come what may. Hopefully it's a couple of Ws and the team goes 4-1 and one heading into the, the last two games of the semester. Well, they're not uh, toning down at all for the rest of the semester. They have a few more home games after this tournament. Um, yeah, they do have a big one against Williams on December 8th. We'll all be here for that. We definitely will. Thank you so much for being here, Brian. It's always a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you.